Heavenly Father, I appreciate you. Heavenly Father, I appreciate you. I love you, adore you, I'll bow down my life before you. Heavenly Father, I appreciate you. Precious Jesus, we appreciate you. Precious Jesus, we appreciate you. We love you, we adore you, and we will bow down our life before you. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. Holy Spirit, we appreciate you. Holy Spirit, we appreciate you. We love you, we adore you, we bow down before you. Holy Spirit, we appreciate you. Oh, don't you though, Heavenly Father, wonderful Savior Jesus, precious Holy Spirit, if you don't know them, personally. You have come to the right place because we read his word and let his Holy Spirit draw you into a personal relationship with you. Did you know you could have a personal relationship with your Heavenly Father? And it's all if you choose to receive Jesus and the price he paid for your sin. It's all paid. If you will receive him, you can't do it on your own. We sin. We're, we say we're going to straighten up. And, but Jesus purchased it once and for all. And we can walk and live in that. So welcome to the reading of the word of God on this beautiful August 19. August 19. And we are enjoying ourselves in the Old Testament in the book of Esther, and we are up to chapter 4. Esther 4. So please find it in your Bible. Bring your Bible. Bring your coffee or your tea or your orange juice or water or whatever you do in the morning. <clears throat> and just settle in and give him the first bite of your time of the day. Esther chapter 4. <clears throat> when Mordecai learned all that had happened... And if you don't know, please, it's only three short chapters. Go back and read it. When he learned all that had happened, he tore his clothes and he put on sackcloth and ashes and he went out into the midst of the city. He cried out with a loud and bitter cry. Can you imagine any of us doing that today? Someone would come along and lock us up, I think. He went as far as the front of the king's gate, for no one might enter the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province where the king's command and decree arrived, there was great mourning among the Jews with fasting, weeping, and wailing. They had a death sentence over them. And many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther's maids and eunuchs came and they told her. Imagine you could be in that palace. Behind all those walls and not know what's going on outside in the city streets. Wow. They came and they told her. And the queen was deeply distressed. And then she sent garments to clothe Mordecai and take his sackcloth away from him, but he would not accept them. And then Esther called Hadash, one of the king's eunuchs whom he had appointed to attend her, and she gave him a command concerning Mordecai to learn what 
and why this was. She didn't know. So Hatash went out to Mordecai in the city square that was in front of the king's gate. And Mordecai told him all that had happened to him and the sum of money that Haman <clears throat> had promised to pay into the king's treasuries to destroy the Jews. He also gave him a copy of the written decree for their destruction, which was given at Shushan, that he might show it to Esther and explain it to her, and that he might command her to go in to the king to make supplication to him and plead before him for her people. So Hatash returned and told Esther the words of Mordecai. And then Esther spoke to Hatash and gave him a command for Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that any man or woman who goes into the inner court to the king who has not been called, he has but one law, put all to death, except the one to whom the king holds out the golden scepter that he may live. Yet I myself have not been called to go into the king these 30 days. So they told Mordecai Esther's words. And then Mordecai told them to answer Esther. Do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. He had total confidence in God by that statement. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, Go, gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan, and fast for me, neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will fast likewise, and so I will go to the king, which is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. Can you imagine the pressure? So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther commanded him. And we move right along to chapter 5 of Esther. Now it happened on the third day that Esther put on her royal robes and stood in the inner court of the king's palace across from the king's house while the king sat on his royal throne in the royal house facing the entrance of the house. <clears throat> Can you imagine how she felt? And so it was. When the, queen, when the king saw Queen Esther standing in the court, that she found favor in his sight. Oh, there's our precious Heavenly Father coming through, isn't it? Favor he felt in his heart. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. And then Esther went near and touched the top of the scepter. And the king said to her, What do you wish, Queen Esther? What is your request? It shall be given to you up to half the kingdom. Really? So Esther answered, If it pleases the king, let the king and Haman come today to the banquet that I have prepared for him. And then the king said, Bring Haman quickly, that he may do as Esther has said. So the king and Haman went to the banquet 
that Esther had prepared. And at the banquet of wine, the king said to Esther, What is your petition? It shall be granted you. What is your request? Up to half the kingdom. It shall be done. And then Esther answered and said, My petition and request is this. If I have found favor in the sight of the king, and if it pleases the king to grant my petition and fulfill my request, then let the king and Haman come to the banquet, which I will prepare for them, and tomorrow I will do as the king has said. So Haman went out that day joyful and with a glad heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate and that he did not stand or tremble before him, he was filled with indignation against Mordecai. Nevertheless, Haman restrained himself and went home. And he sent and he called for his friends and his wife, Zeresh. And then Haman told them of his great riches, the multitude of his children, everything in which the king had promoted him, and how he had advanced him above the officials and the servants of the king. <clears throat> and there's a wonderful word in the Lord's book that says, Pride goes before the fall. Pride goes before the fall. Moreover, Haman said, Besides, Queen Esther invited no one but me to come in with the king to the banquet that she prepared. And tomorrow I am again invited by her along with the king. Yet, all this avails me nothing, so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate. And then his wife Zeresh and all his friends said to him, Let a gallows be made, fifty cubits high, and in the morning suggest to the king that Mordecai be hanged on it, and then go merrily with the king to the banquet. And the thing pleased Haman. So he had the gallows made. And we move right along to chapter 6. That night, the king could not sleep. So one was commanded to bring the book of the records of the chronicles. And they were read before the king. Imagine that suggestion, Holy Spirit. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Bigthana and Teresh, two of the king's eunuchs, the doorkeepers who had sought to lay hands on King Ahasuerus. And then the king said, What honor or dignity has been bestowed on Mordecai for this. And the king's servants who attended him said, nothing has been done for him. So the king said, who is in the court? Now Haman had just entered the outer court of the king's palace to suggest that the king hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. The king's servant said to him, Haman is there, standing in the court. And the king said, let him come in. So Haman came in, and the king asked him, What shall be done for the man whom the king delights to honor? Now Haman thought in his heart, Well, who would the king delight to honor more than me? And Haman answered the king, For the man whom the king delights to honor, let a royal robe be brought which the king has worn, and a horse 
on which the king has ridden, which has a royal crest placed on its head. And then let this robe and horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes, that he may array the man whom the king delights to honor, and then parade him on horseback through the city square and proclaim before him, Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delights to honor. And then the king said to Haman, Hurry, take the robe and the horse as you have suggested, and do so for Mordecai the Jew, who sits within the king's gate. Leave nothing undone of all that you have spoken. <clears throat> you want to talk about Humboldt? Gulp. So Haman took the robe and the horse, arrayed Mordecai, and led him on horseback through the city square. Can you imagine him trying to do this? Mm -mm -mm. And he proclaimed before him, Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delights to honor. And afterward, Mordecai went back to the king's gate. But Haman hurried to his house, mourning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, with his head covered. And when Haman told his wife, Zeresh, and all his friends everything that had happened to him, his wise men and his wife, Zeresh, said to him, If Mordecai, before whom you have begun to fall, is of Jewish descent, you will not prevail against him, but will surely fall before him. Now he has nobody on his side. And while they were still talking with him, the king's eunuchs came and hastened to bring Haman to the banquet, which Esther had prepared. And we move along to chapter 7. So the king and Haman went to dine with Queen Esther. And on the second day, at the banquet of wine, the king again said to Esther, what is your petition, Queen Esther? It shall be granted you. And what is your request? Up to half the kingdom. It shall be done. And then Queen Esther answered and said, If I have found favor in your sight, O king, and if it pleases the king, let my life be given me at my petition, and my people at my request, for we have been sold, my people and I, to be destroyed, to be killed, and to be annihilated. Had we been sold as male and female slaves, I would have held my tongue, although the enemy could never compensate for the king's loss. So King Ahasuerus answered and said to Queen Esther, who is he and where is he? Who would dare presume in his heart to do such a thing? And Esther said, The adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. So Haman was terrified before the king and queen. And then the king arose in his wrath from the banquet of wine and went into the palace garden. But Haman stood before Queen Esther, pleading for his life, for he saw that evil was determined against him by the king. And when the king returned from the palace garden to the place of the banquet of wine, Haman had fallen across the couch where Esther was. And then the king said, Will he also assault the queen while I am in the house? And as the word left the king's mouth, 
They covered Haman's face. Oh, those servants were glad and ready to do it, weren't they? Now, Harbanah, one of the eunuchs, said to the king, Look, the gallows, 50 cubits high, which Haman made for Mordecai, who spoke good on the king's behalf, is standing at the house of Haman. And then the king said, Hang him on it. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. And then the king's wrath subsided. And we leave off there till tomorrow, Lord willing, that we're here. All right, we move right along to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians, this exciting book filled with instructions for we Christians. 1 Corinthians 12. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, Paul says, Brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another, faith by the same Spirit, to another, gifts of healings by the same Spirit. And notice that gifts and healing, they are both plural. Gifts of healings. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits to another different kind of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues but one and the same spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills and so there is absolutely plain confirmation from God's word that speaking in tongues is from him. It's from him. Do not speak against it, for you speak against the workings of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being mem many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? 
If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body, just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now, indeed, there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, do we bestow greater honor. And our unpresentable parts have greater modesty. But our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to that part which lacks it, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Isn't that beautiful? Do you know where you fit in the whole body of Christ? If you don't, pray, ask the Lord. He will show you. Think about yourself. Think about your life. What gifts has God put within you? He would use those gifts for the body of Christ as a whole. Oh, so beautiful, so beautiful. Do not let any circumstances or events in life cause you to despise any part of your body. It has been gloriously formed and made by God. All right, we move right along to Psalm 36. Psalm 36, this was given... To the chief musician, another psalm of David, the servant of the Lord. An oracle within my heart concerning the transgression of the wicked. There is no fear of God before his eyes, for he flatters himself in his own eyes. Speaking of a body... When he finds out his iniquity and when he hates, the words of his mouth are wickedness and deceit. He has ceased to be wise and to do good. He devises wickedness on his bed. He sets himself in a way that is not good. He does not abhor evil. Your mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the great mountains. Your judgments are a great deep. O Lord, you preserve man and beast. How precious is your loving kindness, O God, Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings. Isn't that beautiful? Let me read that again. Your judgments, your righteousness is like the great mountains. Your judgments are a great deep. O oh Lord, you preserve man and beast. How precious is your loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings. 
They are abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your pleasures. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. Jesus said he was the light. Oh, continue your loving kindness to those who know you and your righteousness to the upright in heart. Let not the foot of pride come against me and let not the hand of the wicked drive me away. There the workers of iniquity have fallen. They have been cast down and are not able to rise. Wow, think about all that. We wrap up today's wonderful reading from his word with Proverbs chapter 21, verses 21 and 22. Proverbs 21, verses 21 and 22. He who follows righteousness and mercy finds life, righteousness, and honor. A wise man scales the city of the mighty and brings down the trusted stronghold. Whoa. Think that one through. Well, praise God. We have been well cared for this morning by the Lord, haven't we? We have been fed his precious eternal word that we can cling to and carry in our hearts to adore him. Thank you, Jesus, for your wonderful, wonderful word. Let's pray. <clears throat> Precious Father God, we just thank you so much for your word. Oh, you just cover everything that we need, Lord, and we are so grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Let Holy Spirit go back over all that was read from your word. And let us find help in our lives. Let us be built up in you. Let us carry on in the body of Christ. Let us care for the body of Christ. Let us show up to fellowship meetings, to services. Let us be a part. Let us use all of our gifts within the body of Christ so that many, many who don't know you can be brought in and there will be strength, there will be help for them. We can enlarge the body of Christ and rob Satan's evil kingdom. That is our mission. Please, Lord, cause each one of us to be very serious about the mission that you have given us. It's just not all about us. It's about saving souls. It's about carrying the gospel to those who haven't heard it to those who need to hear it again. Precious Lord, help us to seek you and find out what you would have us do today. Today, this day, not wasting any more time. Father God, we lift up and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for her peace in the midst of all of this turmoil of the end times, all of this hatred from their enemies. Father God, I'd ask that you would Heal Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu. The stress and the strain was too much on his heart. And Lord, we'd ask you to strengthen him and let him put his whole trust in you. Let him wait on you, Lord, and you will work out your ways the way you want it. Lord, I'd ask you to bless Israel. I ask you to bless the Jews worldwide, that you'd bring them out of bondage and hard places where they've been despised and cast. And Father, bring them home. It's a time now when you are bringing them home. You have 
You have raised up all these new transportation ideas. And I believe number one reason was to bring your people home quickly by plane. Quickly, quickly, quickly. In Jesus' mighty name, glorify your son today, Lord. Bring many of your people home. And Lord, let many help them find a job, a place to live. Let them be welcomed into the land of Israel. Father God, I turn to America and others are turning to countries that are on your heart. Please pray for all of them at this time. Father God, we see you upending many baskets of evil. I'll just put it that way. Turning it over, dumping it out for the whole public to see. Father God, have your will in your way today in America. Our cry to you is for righteousness to once again be established and rule and reign in all of the important positions of our country. In every city, every town, every village, out in the wilderness, out on the farmlands. Precious God, let your word, let our constitution reign with the people. And Lord, all this evil that's trying to ruin justice, we'd ask, Lord, that justice from you would be raised up once again. True justice. We ask this in the precious name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, the Holy One from Nazareth. And all of God's people went ahead with your own prayers and said the great Amen, so be it. And have a wonderful day in the Lord. He loves you so much. He gave his life for you. Tell others. And I love you too. Bye-bye.